did not realize how cold my hands were going to be and this instrument was going to be before I called that tune as our first tune. But we made it through, and now we're warmed up. Thank you all so much for coming here. Um, so glad to see these faces out here. We're going to keep playing some music for you all. What a treat it is to be here at Monks uh, this evening. I'm um, covering for uh, Chloe Yahtzee, a good friend of mine who uh, lives in Virginia. Um, and uh, I'm just super happy to be here. I was a little nervous, but I think I got, I think I got out of my system. All right, let's do another tune. I'm going to introduce the band after that. Thank you. We are the Paul Deemer Quartet.
Thank you so much. That's Ross Margitz on the piano, everybody. Swing it. We got Jeremy George on the upright bass. Jeremy George. That's right. Mike Gordon on the drums. What a fun group to play with. These are my guys. We're all in our 30s. Like right there around 35. So, you know, that's cool. We got a lot to connect on. <laughs> That tune was entitled Sweet Pumpkin, uh, which I feel is apropos for the season that we're transitioning or that we're pretty much in uh, at the moment, right? It's a little frigid out there. Um, the tune before that was entitled Bird Lives by Jackie McLean. And that's a fun tune and a fast tune and a hard tune. So uh, what a blast that was. Um, we are the Paul Deemer Quartet. This is Monks. We're going to play one more tune. And then I'm going to bring uh, Colin up here to say a few things, to talk about this beautiful thing he has going on here, this legacy, uh, this, this, this treat that he has here for all of us. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to do another tune, and we'll get right back to that. Thank you all so much. You can feel free to hoot and holler, like he said. Just let it out. <laughs> Only if you feel it, though. I, I understand.
Alter Ego by, uh, was it James Williams? James Williams. Williams. Now, I first heard it um, off of a Roy Hargrove album. And uh, that's a chill tune. What'd you all think of that tune? Did you dig it? A little bit? So this concert for me, uh, coincidentally and serendipitously, uh, lands a few weeks, close to a month, uh, after my third year playing trumpet. So I started trumpet um, at the beginning of quarantine. As I guess, like I started right before quarantine um, and took it out to some jams kind of just for kicks and it sounded horrible and I, it felt horrible and it was just kind of not a great idea. It wasn't a great idea at all. Um, and I still had trombone gigs too at that time. Again, it was pre-COVID. So I just, you know, after a couple of jam sessions, I just put that thing away. I got scared off. I ran off, you know, on that. So when the quarantine happened, you know, there went all the gigs, all the gigs on trombone, which provided or presented the opportunity to dive headlong into the trumpet without worrying or the worry of that interfering with my trombone playing and gigs and going out to jams and uh, sounding like crap. So um, that was a silver lining for me, and also therapy, and made me grow as a musician entirely, and a, a brass technician as well, bringing back a lot of technique to the trombone from trumpet. Um, I now am of the mind that if you play one, you should learn the other, and vice versa, and that should start in early, the early years, middle school. Um, uh, and as an educator, you know, I'm gonna do my best to to uh, facilitate that or reinforce that or mention it or whatever, including right now. But uh, in the meantime, this thing, oh, the trumpet has just been kicking my butt in a great way. It has been a super fun challenge and um, I'm so uh, privileged and lucky to be able to bring it here uh, at this venue, uh, at, here at Monks and be allowed to play it for an audience. So I'm super thankful for that um, and in that gratitude, I'd like to uh, welcome up uh, Colin Shook here to, to uh, talk a little bit, bit about what he's doing here with Monks and um, what he's doing here in Austin, Texas. So let's welcome up Colin Shook, everybody. Ooh. One more time for Paul Deemer. Thanks again, everyone, for coming out. Um, if you're not familiar with Monks, uh, we started this as a pop-up listening room series all the way back in 2016. I'm also a jazz pianist and who had been gigging around here in Austin for long enough, and there was not a place for us to play without being in a loud bar, people, you know, yelling down your uh, neck about football and Trump and, you know, <laughs> whatever people talk about uh, and catch up about. But uh, we were doing two or three of these concerts a month, going to, like, art galleries, and we did a, a, a year at a bicycle shop, all these different spots. But uh, also through the pandemic, uh, I had just gotten this first camera. We streamed a few concerts and we joined up with the Jazz Society and was able to get a spot uh, right around the corner. And we're now quickly approaching 400 concerts just like this, live streamed and archived and taped. Um, you know, capturing all the talent we have uh, here in Austin in Central Texas and a lot of touring artists. So I encourage you to go check out our YouTube channel uh you can find it on all of our you know social pages and website and everything but uh we try to stream as high quality video and especially the audio out there um so you can definitely go check that out i would like to also tell you about some upcoming shows uh tomorrow night it's unfortunately sold out but you can still catch the stream or the replay it's with a uh, woodwind uh woodwind and saxophone and composer uh his name is alex coke he's premiering a new suite of music with a string quartet and a big grand concert harp and all this amazing stuff in collaboration with the local artist, Christopher Hines. It's sort of the uh, cap to his uh, East, uh, Art East uh, weekend. I guess there's a big art festival that goes on all across uh, Austin. So that's gonna be an amazing show. Please check that out online. And then we're continuing back with our Midweek at Monk series on Wednesday night with the Austin Jazz Society. And this Wednesday, we'll be featuring the Dane Relaford Quartet. He's another wonderful piano player here in town. Um, and yeah, please come back and check us out. Tell your friends about us. Check out the stream, all that. And if you're tuning in online, please subscribe. And most importantly, if you'd like to support these guys, we do have a very small uh, you know, seating, small capacity here in the club. 
please go to that Venmo and that PayPal and support these fine musicians. Thank you. Thanks so much, Colin. What a, what a beautiful thing he has going on here. Um, it's just going to continue to grow and flourish. So let's give Colin Shook and Monks Jazz another round of applause. It's such a privilege, and Austin doesn't know how spoiled it is, spoiled it is to have it here. So uh, we're going to keep playing um, some music for you all. Uh, the next tune I'm going to play for you is entitled Darn That Dream. So we're going to do a little ballad and uh, make it more intimate than it already is. <laughs> exactly.
Thank you very much. This is also my first gig of this sort where it's just me on the front line, so I'm uh, feeling the effects in real time. <laughs> uh, we've got a few more tunes for you all, but I'm going to reintroduce this man. That's so beautiful. I'm going to go from the uh, other side of the stage here. We've got Mike Gordon on drums, everybody. Let's give them a round of applause. Aren't these sensitive musicians? Big ears in the middle. They all hit the ground running. He's new to town and he's already gigging everywhere. Jeremy George, teaching at Huston, Houston. I always do that. Houston Tillotson, right, right downtown on the east side, right over there. Uh, a, a friend of mine who's been in and out of Austin and spent some time in Chicago, Detroit, New York. Did my, I'm just going to throw all the cities in there. <laughs> L.A. Um, he's one of my favorite players. Uh, all of these guys are deep in tradition and vocabulary and super musical human beings. On piano, again, one of my favorite musicians, uh, Ross Margitza. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Taipei, Tokyo. <laughs> all right. My name is Paul Diemer. This is my quartet. I'm going to hydrate. Are we all staying hydrated? I didn't used to have to hydrate so much. So I'll, I guess I failed to mention I'm originally and principally a trombone player. I've been playing it for 25 years. Um, and I never drink water in the way that I do with trumpet. It feels like trumpet is so athletic. And I'm getting older. But, uh, you know, those two things combined, I think I'll go through like six bottles of water a night. So um, I guess that's a good habit to acquire with this new venture here, right? Uh, all right, enough chit chat. We're going to play some more tunes for you all. Thank you so much for coming. Um, on to the music.
just like we rehearsed. <laughs> that was, I stole that from our drummer, that's what he said. And it's true. <laughs> <laughs> that tune was entitled In Your Own Sweet Way. Uh, how many of y'all have heard this tune before? Yes, we got a clap. Two, three, all right. That's a Dave Brubeck tune entitled In Your Own Sweet Way. I love that tune, it's kind of different than, and I need to do some more digging with Dave Brubeck. I think uh, he's associated a lot with the timeout um, and that whole genesis of, or chapter of, uh, of work. But this tune is so much fun and it's just winding and it takes you on a ride and then you have a little rest, a little, uh, little island to hang out on in between. You might have heard that, that's how we ended the tune. So we call that an A-flat sus chord. <laughs> Beautiful, right? Ooh, it's pleasant. Yeah. So winding, tension, and then release. <laughs> Very good. Storytelling, of course. Um, my friend Elena is not in the house, is she? No? OK, moving forward. <laughs> Uh, we've got uh, enough time for a few more tunes uh, for you all. Man, it's been such a blast to do this and frightening and a lot of imposter syndrome uh, with the three years under my belt on these things. It uh, takes up a lot of bandwidth for me personally to play these, I, the trumpet players call them the what coil of torture, the metal coil of torture, something along those lines. And I didn't know until I actually started playing what that meant, and it's completely accurate. Um, so I think what, what a Dizzy Gillespie said, uh, sometimes you wake up and you touch the horn, pick up the horn, and you win. And then other times you wake up and you pick up the horn and the horn wins. And then you keep doing that, and eventually you die, and the horn wins. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's a, a lot of things in life. But we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> um, let me get this. Oh. We're going to do one, one of my favorite tunes. Um, and uh, it's such a challenge for me to, um, the, name, the name of the tune is called Con Alma, speaking of Dizzy Gillespie, which means with soul. And you know, I, the big challenge and goal for me is to get through all the technical aspects and all the personal and the uh, focus issues and everything and get it to where I can set it aside, I'm comfortable with everything, and everything is, is ingrained or um, in the subconscious or in the zone is what people say, right? When they, not even thinking it, all of a sudden the game's over, or whatever it is that they're doing. So I have to get all of this stuff, practice and repeat and get it to where I have all this space freed up for bandwidth to hear the moment. So that's kind of my goal and I think that's the musician's goal is to get all these things familiar enough so that they don't have to think about the technique and everything else I mentioned, so that they can commit um, fully, 100% to the moment, which is always changing. Uh, it never, it's, it, once it happens, it's gone, it never comes back. A lot of people talk about the mo moment being infinite, right? So to listen to the moment and be of the moment, it really requires all that work and preparation so that you don't have to think about it, so that you can clear up this whole space in your mind, meditative, very much so to be here in the moment and listen to each other and express and speak to each other. And I think that kind of is the, the, the concept or the notion of con alma for me is to um, be of the moment and be able to commit to the moment um, entirely, okay? So we're, with that said, we're gonna continue with con alma uh, by Dizzy Gillespie.
Kun Alma. All right. Do we have time for a quick blues? All right, we're going to do a quick blues. This is going to be Sandu. This is our last tune. Thank you all so much for coming. We've got Ross Margitz on piano, Jeremy George on the upright bass, Mike Gordon, ooh, that was close, on the drums. Again, we are the Paul Deemer Quartet. This is Monks here in Austin, Texas. Um, and we're going to play Sandu, which is a blues by Clifford Brown, whose birthday just passed um, a few weeks ago. And he's one of my favorite musicians of all time and uh, pretty much the main inspiration for me to play, pursue jazz and uh, later trumpet. So again, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time.
Thank you all so much. Have a great evening. We'll see you all soon.